Hello friends. So in the previous session, we have started with the DC shunt generator, and I finished off the lecture by asking you a question that if the shunt generator is producing the current for its own field, how does it initially gets the voltage? All right. So the question was, for example, you are having a shunt generator something like this. All right. So this is a shunt generator which I am going to draw very quickly. So this is your EA, and this is your RA. So this is the armature circuit here, and it, this is your field winding. Okay, this is a shunt field winding. So the question was, initially when the motor has not, uh, sorry, the generator has not started to rotate, or it's just starting to rotate, you're just turning on the generator. Okay, so in that case, the current IF will be equal to zero. Okay, and if current IF is equal to zero, there will be no flux inside the machine. Then how is the EMF going to get generated? The machine will never start. The, sorry, the machine will never generate power. So today I am going to discuss how that happens. So today's topic is the voltage buildup of a shunt generator. All right. I'll just put down the statement first. Actually, how the voltage is generated is because of the presence of a residual flux in the pole of the machine. All right. Residual flux in the pole of the machine. So I'll just uh, put up. So the voltage buildup. Right, the voltage build up. I'm writing it down so that you can also take it down in your notebooks. All right, so voltage build up depends on the presence. All right, on the presence of a residual flux. Residual flux in the pole of the machine, in the pole of the generator. Because we are talking about generator, I don't need to use a general term. So let us take it as the pole of the generator. Now residual flux, you know that in the BH curve, okay, of a magnetic material, you know that something like this, right? You have already learnt it. Now at this point, when the current equal to zero, when the MMF equal to zero, you find that there is a little bit of flux which is present, and this is called the residual flux. Okay, so this much value is the residual flux. So the voltage build up of the machine actually the generator depends upon the value of this residual flux okay let's say let's see what happens here now what happens is that when the machine is going to start all right the machine is going to start and you're just starting to rotate the machine initially the ea generated will be due to the residual flux of the machine all right so ea is equal to k phi omega you know that so in the initial case it will be the residual flux which uh, gives the emf all right ea will ea residual will be equal to k phi residual multiplied by omega which is around this value due to that residual flux it's around 1 volt or 2 volt okay so now you are having an emf across it all right now when you have an emf across it what happens this if value will be equal to this ea residual divided by rf all right so initially the if was zero when you start the machine but now due to this residual flux if has increased okay and uh, due to the increase in if now what would happen the flux would increase from the residual value initially it was flux residual now because of the presence of a field current along with that the flux would increase and this flux would be greater than the residual flux now because the flux has increased what will happen because the flux has increased ea which is equal to k phi into omega because the increase in flux, EA also increases. Now, once the EA increases, you know that this is the terminal voltage VT. Okay. And once EA increases, you know that VT will increase. Okay. And once VT increases, you know that IF is equal to VT divided by RF. Now, in case of an open circuit here, EA will be uh, almost same as equal to the, almost same as equal to the VT. So, this would increase okay this is already increasing so if would increase and this if would further increase the value of flux right because flux is a function of if right so if if increases flux increases and once the flux increases what happens it comes back to this position so it is like a closed loop okay so once flux increases again ea increases ea increases again vt increases again if increases and again flux increases so it is going to go through a loop like this now till how much this will go okay can flux keep on increasing inside the magnetic poles no it cannot increase that is when the nonlinearity sets in which is called the saturation nonlinearity that you already know right 
So if this is the value of IF, okay, and this is the value of flux in the pole, as initially it would increase, but as saturation kicks in, it would gradually decrease. The increase in flux with respect to IF would gradually decrease, and at some point here you call that the machine is in the saturated condition. So therefore, this increase is only till the saturation point. Okay. So let me just put that down here in words here. Let me just refer the notes. Okay. So what happens? Eventually, the saturation. Okay. Eventually, the saturation of the poles limits the terminal voltage. Right. So once the flux value, once the flux value has reached a constant value, EA will be not going to change because omega is constant. You are rotating it at 1000 RPM, 1600 RPM, 1000. That is up to you. So this is constant. And once saturation sets in, this is also a constant. And K, of course, is a constant. So EA is constant. Therefore, VT is a constant. And therefore, the increase in EA is stopped there. And finally, IF also reaches a steady value. All right. Terminal voltage of the generator. So this is how the voltage uh, is going to build up. So graphically, let us see what happens here. All right. So what happens is that let me just plot a graph between EA. This is also equal to VT. Okay. Both the graphs are going to be same here. And this is IF. Okay. Amperes. This is in volts. Okay. So initially when IF is equal to zero, there will be a residual flux. And because of that residual flux, you will have a residual EMF, right? So this point will go to correspond to a residual EMF. So this is EA residual. This point is EA residual. Now, because of this EA residual, I told you the IF is going to increase, right? Because the uh, initial IF was equal to zero. And but when uh, voltage is there, IF is going to increase, right? So there will be a new value of IF now. Oh, let me just put in a different color. So because of this new value of EA, there will be a new value of IF. Now, because of this new value of IF, the flux is further increasing. All right. And because of that, EA also will increase. So therefore, graphically, in usually textbooks, they put it like this. So this is going to be your new value of EA. So new value of EA. And because of this new value of EA, the value of IF will further increase. See, this is, I. let me just call it as IF1. And this is IF2. Okay. And because of this new value of IF2, the EA is further going to increase. So this is your EA1, EA2. Okay, so this is going to be the next point. All right. And this point is pro going to continue. So it will go like this. Again, increase, again, increase like this, like this. It will go finally till the machine is going to saturate. So the graph will look something like this. So finally here, the machine is going to saturate. Okay. So at this point where the machine is going to saturate here, remember that I have not connected any load to the machine, right? This is all happening under the no load condition. All right. So this is the IF at no load condition. This will be IA at no load condition. So in this particular machine, finally saturation has sets in the EA settles down at a value, which is EA at no load. In case you load the machine, you can find the terminal voltage also. Now, RF is equal to Vt divided by IF, right? So for that, you can have another graph, which is the resistance graph, all right? So that graph will look like this. It is a linear graph. So this is the RF graph, which is equal to Vt divided by RF. And the point at which these two meet is the operating point of the generator. So this green curve, which is the EA, versus IF. This is also the magnetization curve. All right. And when these two graphs meet at one point, it is the operating point of the machine. All right. This uh, value <coughs> of RF is also going to play a value on whether the machine will have a voltage buildup or not. All right. So that will be in a future discussion. Now here I have explained it like a step rise, right? Step like rise. Okay. But in reality, EA and IF increase is happens together. It's not that IF increases, then EA increases. It does not happen like that. So the graph is going to go together. So this step which I have drawn is only for 
explanation purpose but this green graph is what you will actually get all right so i'll just write down that point also here the steps okay are just for explanation are just for explanation and ea and if increase simultaneously ea and if increase simultaneously okay until steady state condition until steady state condition kicks in okay now so this is how the voltage builds up in a shunt generator now when you for example you are having a shunt generator and you are starting but there is no voltage build up that means this process itself is not occurring so what will you do let us see that in the next lecture that is why does not a voltage build up occur in a shunt generator and what you can do to make the voltage build up in a shunt generator that is i am going to give you the problem and i am going to give you the solution all right so that is with this lecture today i hope you have liked this particular session in case you are having any doubts please put them in the comments below and in case you like the video you please press the like button and share and subscribe the channel and i'll see you in the next video thank you